today on Karamo. <laughs> this is crazy. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. <gasps> it's a family in complete turmoil. I just can't, I'm done, I can't. Taylor has a child that her sister is raising. I don't feel like she thinks I appreciated the fact that she made me a mother. And now, all of the issues involving these two sisters. There is so much here to unpack. And their mother. You're embarrassing me right now. Will set off a chain reaction that is way too much for Taylor to handle. I'm so done. Plus, after everyone scattered when gunshots rang out at a party. Where you at? I could have been dead, bro. Daniel wants to know. Just betrayal. Why his best friend left him completely behind. How you leave your brother during the shooting? You won't believe what their friend Brittany is about to reveal. He was being shady. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Welcome to the show, friends. Um, it's a mother-daughter relationship at a breaking point. Taylor is a single mother of four who stands accused of being a terrible parent. Who's making these allegations? Her own mother, Brenda. Wow. Caught in the middle of this family drama is Taylor's older sister, Jessica. So I want to talk to her first. Everyone, please welcome Jessica to the show. <laughs> Hi, Jessica, thank you so much for being here. Tell me, what's going on between your mother and your sister? Oh, it's a lot of drama. It's my sister moved in six months ago with her four kids, two dogs. She just expects everything, everybody to stop their life for her. She doesn't think she needs to cook. She doesn't need to clean. Somebody asked her to do that. That's the end of the world. How dare you ask her to be an adult or a mother? Mm -hmm. And she'll start to call my mom a bitch. You know, shut the up. I can't stand you. I, I hate you. Wow. You can't make me do this just because I live here. Tell me about the fights that you've had to break up between your mom and Taylor. A uh, recent one, actually, not too, probably about a week ago. I had to go over there because my mom was asking her to get some laundry done so that the kids had clothes for the next day for school. And she's like, you're a bitch. I hate you. You know, no one she really likes word, you. Don't she? Okay, she, like, that's her go-to. All right. It is. She loves the B word. Um, it's it's ridiculous. It's and I had to literally come there, standing between them, and say, "All right, Taylor, this is what you need to do. You live here scot free. It, the least you could do is clean up after your kids, clean yeah. up after your dog." Okay, so how often are they fighting in front of the kids? Oh gosh, daily. Probably three or four times a day. Wow. Um, I want to know how involved is Taylor with her kids from your perspective? Uh, she's not. Um, why her kids were in football and cheerleading, and if Taylor didn't feel like getting out of bed because she was too tired, they didn't go. Oh, um, wow. She doesn't work with them on their homework. She'll sit down and do her homework and then expects the kids just to figure it out, or she'll call me and say, hey, can you help the kids with the homework? I got to do my homework. And I'm like, I've got two kids of my own. Hold I can't you, drop you my said, life. You said Taylor, Taylor does her homework. Is she in school? She did just start college, okay, like well. online courses. Okay. So it's important to her to get her schoolwork done, but it, she doesn't think that it's important for her kids to do the same. Got it. So does your sister Hers stay out? first. Does your sister stay out all night? Uh, she works as a bartender, and then she'll stay out probably after her shift well until the morning hours. You know, her kids are sleeping. That's her philosophy. She doesn't need to be there and watch them sleep. Okay. So do you think your mom is raising her kids more than she is? Absolutely. She has since the day my sister had my niece at 16 years old. Mm, I got you. Absolutely. Hey, you said your sister needs she, to grow up. What do you mean by that? Yeah, she's almost 30 years old. She needs to take responsibility like any other adult does. Granted, we all move back into our parents. That's what we're there for. But you still need to get a job. You still need to make sure your kids are taken care of. You have to feed them. I don't care if they're 14 years old. Obviously, you still take care of them. My mom's doing it for you at 30. Oh, listen. Well, we've heard one side of this story, but Taylor, the person in question, is here as well. So, Taylor, come on out. Let's welcome her to the show, everyone. What's going on? Because I can I'm see just, the emotion. I just don't emotion. understand why it. she's being so dramatic about this. Like, she's... This isn't... I don't, I don't even know. I'm just so sick to my stomach right now. 
So what is it that you feel like your sister was saying that was dramatic? The way I, I am with my kids, like, I'm not a mother. I don't, I'm not involved with my kids. <laughs> yes, I have talked to my mother that way. But she doesn't, what she doesn't see is what she does to me to push me to that extreme. It's not that I think I'm entitled to not do things around the house, but I work, I'm in school, and I'm a single parent. Why does Jessica think that your mom is raising your kids? Because at one point, yes, I was a very crappy mom. Taylor, at one point you were, but yet there's times where I come over to the house and you've been asleep all day. And mom is so frustrated because she's taking care of everything, getting them ready in the morning, giving them, fixing them dinner, doing their schoolwork, and you're asleep in your Mom bedroom. does not do schoolwork with the kids. She does not fix them dinner. I've been there where she's cooking them dinner. I mean, yes, she has. She has cooked them dinner, and I, I thank her for that. But she's not more raising than, my kids because she more, fixes them dinner. I do their homework no, before exactly. I do my schoolwork, even though mom said that she when's had my back when I started everybody. school. What do you want to say to your sister? Like, I don't even know who she is right now. Mm. That, that is a total line of crap, Taylor. You know exactly who I am. No. I've had this conversation with you at mom's house in your face before. Yeah, we've this had this not... conversation long ago. Nothing it still happens. Changed. Jessica, from your point of view, what is it that you're feeling like still happens? She doesn't take responsibility for things. Mm -hmm. She, you know, if I do come over, she is asleep a lot of times. Yeah, because I work at night until 3.30 in the morning. I get off work at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You should be up and going. I sleep until about 11 or 12. I wake up, I hang out for a little bit, do some schoolwork, go get the kids at two, come back home, lay down for a Those little are, bit. Taylor, that's what you're supposed to do. That's part of having- Exactly, a which is why I do it. That is why I do it, because it's what I'm supposed to do. Jessica, you say that um, she's not a hands-on mom. What do you mean by that? I come over and help him with her homework versus Taylor. Twice because she's she done that. Because she doesn't know Twice. the questions. I'm sitting down doing their homework with them, and I'm Yelling getting it done before you need to get yours done. I do my, I get it done, but I get theirs done. So and Jessica, my producer no. told me this, what I thought was interesting. Taylor um, actually has a fifth child that you're raising. How did you end up with him? Don't go away because all of the issues involving these two sisters. But that's what you're supposed to do. That's part of having Exactly, which is why I do it. And their mother. You're embarrassing me right now. Will set off a chain reaction that is way too much for Taylor to handle. I'm so done. No. What do you want to say to your sister? Like, I don't even know who she is right now. Mm. Jessica, from your point of view, what is it that you're feeling like still happens? She doesn't take responsibility for things. Taylor um, actually has a fifth child that you're raising. How did you end up with him? We were both pregnant in 2015. Um, and I had a miscarriage at two months. My sister's pregnancy carried on. Um, it was extremely emotional and difficult for both of us. We wanted to have a child both of us carry a child together and kind of like have uh, siblings close to each other, but cousins. Um, and unfortunately, I was in a same-sex relationship and in vitro, I miscarried. I tried two more times. Um, it did not, was not successful. In which um, I gave you time, money for one of I them. Was, and Taylor, something that I don't know that I could have done, gave me a child. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. This, this, it makes more sense about why your child is, I, I see what you were doing there. You're seeing your sister, same-sex marriage. Yeah. She wants to have a child. You're, are you involved in that child's life? I am. I see him every day. How does it make you feel that she has your child? Does it, are you okay with it? it? At first, it was hard. It was really hard because going, going home without a baby that you've been carrying for nine months is extremely difficult. <laughs> It took a toll on me. It, I was very depressed for a long time. I thought that it was going to be something that would make a relationship better. And it really hasn't. I understand. I know that that's not something that everybody can do. And I really honestly don't know how I did it, other than the fact that I love my sister.
I love you too, Taylor. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. I would not be here. I have put my life on hold for you to come on the show and fix you because I know this isn't the person you were supposed to be. Jessica, why do you feel like Taylor resents you as a mother? You know, I, I honestly, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I now, um, is the son that Taylor has given me. I have a biological daughter, and I think Taylor got upset because she thought that her giving me would mean that that's the only child I would ever have. I don't know if she felt like, okay, I give my sister this baby, that should satisfy her, she doesn't need any more kids. I don't feel like she thinks I appreciated the fact that she made me a mother, but that little boy, I feel like he is my own, he is my son. She let me experience every ultrasound. I took her to every doctor's appointment. I felt like she was my surrogate. And that little boy is my world. I, but I also have a little girl that is absolutely amazing. Is it I never true? thought I'd yes. have a child Do you feel that own, way that like, that like, do you have some resentment about that? Uh, yes, because it's, like she said, she was in a relationship that she, you know, it was supposed to be forever. And I get it. Trust me, I'm divorced as well. I know not everything is forever when you expect it to be. Yeah. But the way it kind of all happened, it just, like, instantly, it was just like, oh, well, I'm pregnant, and I'm like, Excuse you, what? I was two years old before I got pregnant, Taylor. And I left my relationship when he was two months. I understand here. <sighs> All right, so everyone at home, there is so much here to unpack. Jessica and Taylor's mom, Brenda, will be joining us next, so stay with us. <clears throat> Taylor's mother is about to come out. I just can't, I'm done, I can't. And what she has to say. You're embarrassing me right now. Will set off a chain reaction that is way too much for Taylor to handle. I'm so done. I missed Harry. I tried two more times. I was not successful. And Taylor gave me a child. I thought that it was gonna be something that would make our relationship better. And it really has. I don't feel like she thinks I appreciated the fact that she made me a mother. Well, it's time to hear Brenda's side of the story. Everyone, please welcome Brenda to the show. <laughs> Brenda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. Everything I've tried doesn't work. You know, I've, he's the youngest of three, and I'm there for all of them, no matter what. But I can't continue to get nothing back. For everything that I give, I get nothing emotionally back. She it's shouldn't have to do that I'm much. exhausted. If you say it's too much, Taylor, then why are you making her do that much? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about what your mom just said? I just, I think she involves herself too much, that more than you what she know, needs how, to. How is she not supposed to? She, she won't give me an opportunity to do something that I need to do as their mother. She inputs herself and does what she believes needs to be done if I don't do it the way she need, she believes it needs to be done. <laughs> or when it needs to be done. I understand that, but I'm still an adult and I still have my children that I'm apparently not taking care of. You can't just decide, okay, I'm gonna step up because they're yelling and screaming at each other and you yell and scream. You have to step up and be patient with your children. Brenda, my producer told me that you think that your daughter, Taylor, chooses nightlife over her kids. Is that I true? just think she chooses her own path over her kids. Like, if she knows I have them there with me, they're safe, and she then has the opportunity to do whatever she wants. Come home whenever she wants. There all the time. Um, and then, you know, it's like, there's six people, there's laundry, there's, you know, and I had surgery, so I'm really out of it right now. Yeah. And it's just, I can't get no help from her. Do you I call her a bad mom to her face? Yes, I have. I know that's not who she wants to be, but I don't know how to get her there. From where I am today as 
a parent compared to a year ago is a huge 180. I then I didn't care. They did whatever they wanted. I didn't care about their schoolwork. I would pawn them off on mom or Jessica and just still did that. my own thing. I still do. I still do. Pawn your t children off on me? Yeah. Yeah. To do what? Go sleep. Go. Well, I sleep when my kids are at school. What, what, I just want to ask you, um, Taylor, was there ever substance abuse issues on your end? Before I had my oldest daughter. What was it, just alcohol, was it drugs? Uh, it was or? pills. Pills, okay. I think you don't understand, like when you go to work or you go to sleep, you leave the kids at home with mom. <clears throat> that makes that her responsibility. Granted, you're in the house, but you're not up, you're not interacting, so that's pawning them off on mom. If I ask mom, say, hey, I'm gonna lay down for a little bit, are you cool? And you tell me, yeah, that's fine, I figured you were gonna lay down. And you, if you say yes and tell me that's fine, I'm going to do so. Because I don't feel like I have a choice. What do you mean if you don't I have say a choice? No, of course you have a argument. choice, it's your house. You always say that, but then the choice that I would choose to make sets you off. This is what I don't get. Like, I don't know why you guys are coming at me right now. Like this, like this is crazy. We can have because a conversation like this, this at home. We don't need to be on television to do this. You're embarrassing the <laughs> out of me right now. Y'all are making some <laughs> up. Y'all are making <laughs> up and it's not, I'm Taylor, embarrassing her. Making... Okay, yes. you live a life in my shoes. You live a you day in my shoes. Her. You are embarrassing her because she's your mother. That one that you call a bitch, that one that takes care of your kids, no, that's, you're Hold on. Let me let me hear what you have to say. You know, let me hear what you have to say. Y'all enjoy this. Don't, what, do you, what do you have to say? Don't go, darling. Don't go. I'm done. I'm done. Get this mic off me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm not. I'm not being judged by these God. people out here. I'm not doing this. this. Is not what I signed up for. Not what I signed up for. I'm so done. <laughs> Crazy. Take a deep breath, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. <gasps> Is there any way this mother and daughter She's my best friend. can find a way to come back together? Taylor, look at me. You are the fuck. Get off my stage. I can't continue to get nothing back. I don't know why you guys are coming at me right now. Y'all are making up. I'm Taylor, embarrassing her. Making... You live a day in my shoe. You are embarrassing her because she's your mother. I'm not being judged by these people out here. I'm not doing this. This is not what I signed up for. I'm so done. <laughs> this is crazy. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. <gasps> There you go. Take a deep breath. <laughs> no, that's not me. That's not what happened. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. I may not cook for my kids, but they're able to cook for themselves. My producer's already told me that you pay the bills in the house, right? You if know. she needs it, you pay. I, I pay it. I got receipts and everything no, for I get this. It. I like, get it. You don't need to. You don't need it. We're not asking for I, buy, I put groceries in the house. Like, I just bought, I just spent $300 on her for clothes for this damn show. Yeah. <sighs> and my sister, she doesn't know anything unless my mom says something to her. She doesn't witness anything. Like... She doesn't live there. She's done the same thing. She's had the same arguments with my mom. I don't know why she's being so extra right now. Yeah, so listen, we're, we're, I'm, we're taking them out of the equation right now. I'm back on you. So you were in a depressive state. Things were hard for you. You Great. checked out before with your children. Yes. And now you're in a place where you're trying to work, you're trying to go to school, and you're trying to figure out how to get back and connect with your kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and because I didn't. How long did that process been? Since I moved in with my mom. So what was the reason that you moved in with her? Because you needed support. Because I needed. I I didn't have anywhere else to go. 
part of why I'm depressed and I have so many issues because I battled an addiction for 11 years and my mom, she was there through it. She supported you. She did and yeah. she just, like I get it. I, I'm, I'm a lot to deal with at times. I, I get that. We don't need to use that language. That's language that someone put in your head that's going to always keep your self-esteem down. Don't say that anymore about yourself. We're not gonna use that language about ourselves anymore. You understand? Yep. You went through some hard things. You're trying to figure it out. That is what life is called. None of us came with a playbook. It's unfortunate right now that you have children that are involved in that situation, but you seem like you're trying to figure it out. I really am. What was your relationship with, like, with your mother growing up? I was just my best friend. So you trusted her. You turned to her. She's been there for you. And that's why this is hitting you so hard, because you feel like you're being attacked and betrayed by your best friend. <laughs> I think that there needs to be more of an acknowledgement of your growth, while also showing you, in that growth, new steps that you can take. But that's not what's happening at all. I get here. that's not what's happening. That's why I'm here. I could see through it, and I can help clear the communication. Are you willing to go back on stage with me? Yeah. Okay, come on. So your daughter's had a lot of growth. Tell me what it's been like for you. Because she just called you backstage her best friend. Taylor, look at me. You know, our goal is to have back what we used to have, the friendship, the best friend. And I acknowledge your growth. I really do. Okay. I see it. And I want you to stop right there. Now, Taylor, can you acknowledge, Mom, I understand that you are exhausted. And I know that I'm here trying, but I know that you're picking up slack that I am not being able to pick up. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with that. You are there to pick up slack. And I'm sorry that I have made you feel that way. Thank you. I think there's in a place in this where I do see the love and I see what y'all do as a family. I mean, I know even before when you said the bait, you know, like you um, giving your sister your child, I understand how hard that was for you, but I also understand what you were doing and the mindset you had of supporting your sister. I see the love that is between you three women. Yes. I do believe there's an issue. I do believe there's an issue with boundaries. And I believe that boundaries is what's causing the language to get abusive, where you say things like you're a bad mom, then you start calling her an F word and calling her the B word, um, which the boundaries I have to be set. Right. Those doesn't hurt. The boundaries have to be set so that you all can stop this abusive language to each other. So Y'all gotta stop that. And I'm just gonna do especially. You acknowledge that your mom's been your best friend and you acknowledge that your mom has been there for you. And it's easy sometimes for the people who have been there for us the most to put our abuse and like attack them. And you gotta stop that. I'm sorry for how I've talked to you. What's happening is she's trying to show y'all that she's trying to be the woman that y'all know she can be. She's never understood the boundaries of what it is to be the mom that you're expecting her to be. Right. She's trying to get there. You're trying. We know. Yeah. But yeah. you're trying. But they have different boundaries for you. So instead of bombarding her with, okay, you're a bad mom, you're not doing this, you're sleeping here, let's set boundaries so that way she can understand, well, listen, no longer is this like y'all are attacking. Right. Do you think a boundary would be better for you in this household? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. So no longer do you have to feel this guilt of like, I'm your best friend, so I feel like I got to be there. Instead, it's like the boundary we set together. Yes. Yes, I believe that also. It's gonna work out, have faith. They're here for you because they love you. Very much. Can you give your mother a hug and say, Mom, I'm down to set these boundaries and we can be better? You have a boundary to set today, but y'all gonna be all right. I believe it, all right? You're welcome. Thank you. All right, everyone, stay with us. We'll be right back with more.
after everyone scattered when gunshots rang out at a party. Where you at? I could have been dead, bro. Daniel wants to know. Just betrayal. Why his best friend left him completely behind. How you leave your brother during the shooting? You won't believe what their friend Brittany is about to reveal. He was being shady. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want you to imagine you're at a party with your ride or die, your best friend, and shots ring out and everyone scatters. For hours, you are searching for your friend, fearing the worst. Well, that's what happened to my next guest, Daniel, when his best friend, Avail, disappeared during a shooting. It turns out that Avail was fine, a little too fine. And that's why Daniel is furious today. Watch this. Uh, me and my boy Avail, we was going to the open mic. I'm, I'm usually a driver, so, but you know, he said, you want to drive, you want to drive. We got to the, uh, the crib, it was like the party, every, every, it was cool, you know, music playing, everything. Just like time went by, maybe like an hour or two, something like that. It was a shooting, people was panicking, trying to get up out of there. I can't find Avail nowhere. I left the party, tried to go to the car, the car gone, and I'm calling Avail and he not answering. I, I don't know what's happened to him, something might have happened to him. We brothers. I've, kn I've known this man since middle school. If you somebody's brother, why are you leaving? We came together, there's a shooting. You know this stuff happened in Chicago. I got homies that got killed from gun violence. You feel me? So it's like, why in this situation do you think it's okay to take the car and leave? I could have died, man. I could have got killed. Then what? Why did he leave? I want to know, why did he drive? Did he know? to set me up, like was that, was that his mindset? I really just need to know. You need to tell me, was you my brother or like did you have other intentions? Wow, we gotta figure this all out. Please everyone, welcome Daniel to the show. <laughs> Daniel, thanks for being here, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, of course. So we gotta start off. Tell me, why are you so mad at Avell? Man, why am I not mad at Avell? Yeah. Um, just betrayal. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, you my brother. Mm -hmm. You are family. Yeah. And, and, and when I call somebody my brother, that means you are a part of my family. Yeah. And if I consider you that, if I give you that type of title, that means we have, we got each other back. Yeah. In, my, in that situation, I got your back. I ain't, I ain't leaving, go, I ain't going nowhere until I know you with me. So let's good. go back to that night then. How long were we actually searching for Avell? Man, um... It, re it really all happened so fast, but I know once the shooting happened, I'm looking all around the place where, uh, where everything was going on. Um, I leave out, I go to the car, I, I go to where the car's supposed to be, and uh, the car not there. I'm super confused. I'm, what, I'm, I'm confused and angry at the same time, but yeah. it's like, I'm also a little shook, like it's a shooting. It's Chicago. These things ha unfortunately happen a lot. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know what's going on or where bro at. I'm calling him, he ain't responding. When did you finally <laughs> find out that he was okay? To be honest with you, I could say when, when I seen a post on Instagram, but wow. it's, 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 it was before that. I, I knew he was good when the car was gone. What bothers you the most about what he did? That's my brother. Mm. Where you at? I could have been dead, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, something could have happened to me. Then what? If, if you my brother, I've known you for so long. Bro. Like, we, we done came up together, you feel me? Like How many years? Since middle school. Wow, so that, it's a yeah, long time. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I've known you so long and you could do something like that, as an overthinker, I get to thinking about all types of stuff, like, like could this have been a setup? Honestly, oh, okay. I, prom I, I promise to God. Yeah, so I, <laughs> want, I want to know, what, what was your friendship like with Avell when y'all were growing up? Tell me about that. Good. You get into fights with your, with your brothers. You get into fights with your sister. Like, arguments happen or whatever. Me and him really never really got into it for real. Yeah. We, we was cool. Like, it was always on one accord. You know what I'm saying? Whenever we do things, we, we artists. So, so we, we all around the you know, community just doing different things and stuff like that. It's not something that he don't even look like he do that. Like, he, not, he don't even look like he like that. At this point, at this age, going, being from where I'm from, I don't put nothing past nobody. Yeah, I hear you keep saying I'm overthinking. Maybe could, before the shooting, did you ever have to question his motives or his character? No. Yeah. No, he not. That's what I'm saying. Like, he don't even look like he like that. Like, you know how somebody could look like they might be at that? But I guess those are the ones that, you know, they could be the most. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have you ever confronted him about that night um, of the shooting? To be honest with you, I'm not gonna call no grown man a whole bunch of times. I'm checking on you. Know what, you know what just went down, bro. 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? I seen you post, that's all I need to know. So why do you think that. he was capable, of, this is your best friend, why do you think he was capable of setting you up? Because I think anybody's capable of anything after something that happened like this. Come on, man. And it's been three years since you've last spoken. It's, it's, it's been, it's, yeah, I mean, we, we have, it's, it's literally on the lines of, because we'll see each other at like events and stuff like that, so you know, it's what up, but it ain't, ain't nothing past that. It, we ain't talk, we definitely ain't talk so about it. So you went from every day of talking and then due to this incident, Three years now, there's no communication. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't talk to anybody every day. Yeah, um, but, but you know what I mean, like the, but, the closeness. But, tight, not tight. That's it. Yeah. Like, like just like that. Well, I think it's time to ask Avell why he goes to you. So let's bring Avell out right now. Avell, come on out. <laughs> nah, nah, you chill, bro. Come on. Come you out here saying anything, I've been bro? For, you. for real. I've been waiting for you. I set you up, man. You're out here just talking now, G, for the cameras, G. Cut it out. <laughs> I set on, you man. up. Come on, man. Did Avail leave his best friend behind? How you leave your brother during the shooting? You won't believe what their friend Brittany is about to reveal. He was being shady. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right, so this... You are the cop. You're a first stage. When I call somebody my brother, that means you are a part of my family. Yeah. Like it's a shooting. It's Chicago that I'm calling him. He ain't responding. So when did you finally <laughs> find out that he was okay? I, I knew he was good when the car was gone. I could have been dead, bro. You're out here just talking now. I set Come on, you man. up. Come on, man. Avell, you, you haven't talked to Daniel in three years. Why not? First of all, uh, I really tried to, but it's kind of like you tried to. It's like it's like he kind of said, I guess the pride thing. I'm not gonna keep reaching out because I did. Because first of all, he was he was being shady. I knew he was okay. What? Because afterwards it was a. Hey, bro. A, <laughs> oh, so I, now so now you got amnesia. I, okay, look, I, it was a I'm Instagram you story. Every day. These moments reveal your true friends and whatever, whatever. So I swiped up like, yo, like what's going on? Like yo, what? Like you talking about me? Like what's up? And he didn't say nothing to that. I called you, bro, the same night. Your phone automatically broke. First of all, after okay, the party, look, bro. look, so look. Bill, I want to know from about? your side, of this, from I hit your you point up. of view, what was your version of that night? What happened? Man, when the shots was going off, I remember I was in the back room with some guys, and, and we heard the shots going off, and we heard people screaming, running around, whatever. So I went out, and yeah, it was a frenzy. Like it was crazy. People was falling over each other. Like people, because people was crawling, it was it was like insane. So my genuine first thought is, okay, where's Daniel? Like, where's my friend that I came oh, with? Oh my god! I'm looking around, Come on, man. I don't see him, but it's still Come like on, crazy. Man. So if I don't see him immediately, like, how long I'm supposed to look? Like, it's, it's like shots is going off. What is bro. you talking about, bro? Did my, you ever try to call him or find him before he left? My phone was dead, so I didn't. I didn't phone. get no calls, but. Come I waited, on, I, I on, waited in a car, and then I don't know if you ever been in that situation, but it's not just, oh, you get outside and, okay, yeah, we safe, y'all, we cool, we outside. No, stuff was happening outside, two people was fighting outside and all that. I got in the car, waited for him in bro, the car. I I'm circled your the block. Brother, bro. I circled the bro, block that's looking for call. you. I'm your brother, bro. Why is you leaving somewhere Hold until on. you First see all, me, bro? Look, your look, phone was what are you dead? talking about? We family, bro. What? We are so family, first bro. First of all, don't act like, don't Come act on, like, bro. <laughs> the next day, if your phone did, your phone eventually charged up, right? So why you ain't hit me back? Why, why? You, you hit me back. Come on, man. Instead, you posting shady stories. You just stories. said his phone was dead, though. So how I I'm talking it? about the next night. I'm talking about the next day, bro. So, and so next, you ain't post that shady story there. You know me after that? So, Bill, if bro. you didn't set him up, why did you leave the party without him? Time about set him up. This, this is what bro, he said. Hey, I'm just bro, going off his bro, language. You I'm don't understand, bro. When, when you can't First, reach okay, somebody, look. your mind going to warp and stuff like that. You, you don't even look, I talk, you don't even look like you do something. Like, I, I literally exactly. said... Exactly. Exactly. But, but, no, but, but hold on, though. I don't put it past you because how you leave your brother it, during a shooting in Chicago. Bro. So if first you gonna all, do that, you probably do anything. What is you talking about, fam? You sound goofy. So when did you first find out man. that he was at the party looking for you? Come on, man. So you wasn't, you wasn't wrong at so, all, huh? Brittany. You found out, too? I, yeah. So was that a day later, or...? Yeah, it was about a day or two later, yeah. Okay, day or two but later that you found he, out. 
want to know he who I was on the phone with? Want to know who I was, on the I was on the phone with when I took my Uber home because the car was gone? So I had to pay for the Uber. You want to know who I was on the phone who? with? Brittany. Okay. Brittany. And, and, I, and Brittany, you, you know who Brittany couldn't reach? Take a guess. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right, well, listen, um, now there is one more person involved in this story, Daniel and Dee's best friend, Brittany. Let's bring her out. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Brittany. First of all, you fool. I heard That's you back there lying to these people. I don't know why you out here lying to these people like that. I don't know why you here. No, well, what because, you got to do with no, anything? because first of all, it's Why cap. is she here with first anything? First of all, this is what happened. How do you feel about Avell? Tell me what happened. I feel like it's fake because this your best friend, first of all. No, 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 This no, your no, best wait, friend. Wait, this is not my best friend. This is my brother. Right, this your brother. This, that's broke. This first of all, it's bro, bro code. In Chicago, family code. you know how Chicago I'm is. You know how they get down. Yes. And I just feel like... If a situation, a serious situation like that happened, you don't, you don't just go show a brother. What do you remember from that night? So that night, you know, we lit, you know, in Chicago, we were okay. like, <laughs> and all of a sudden, we hear gunshots. Now it has nothing to do with nobody at the party. Nobody was shooting at the party. It was people that was around. All of us dug for cover, of course. Okay, so everybody came back to make sure everybody was okay. We checked on each other because that's what friends do, right? Right? That's what friends no, do. No, wrong. Apparently, so yes. So we realized that he was gone. Me, Daniel, and my best friend, Dijanae, oh, we were there trying to make sure everybody was okay. You gone, nowhere to be found, you bogus as hell, I don't, I don't care what you're talking about. I feel like, okay, now I'm, I'm trying to hit his lineup, okay? So and you were calling him and there was no answer. Not answering. What, what's wrong? Like, why yeah. would you? That, at least you could do that. At least yeah. you could be like, okay, y'all, I'm, I'm downstairs in the car, I'm waiting downstairs in the car, I disperse. Because I understand you're going to get out there jam if they start, you know, shoot. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if you did leave, why you didn't come back? to come check up on everybody. That's not a real friend to wait, me. Wait, wait a minute, can I add to that? So, can, I, can, I, can I add to that too? You got a charger in your car. No, I don't. Work. So no, how you your ain't phone, got no your car. phone ain't turned no on the whole car. night, huh? Your phone First was so all, dead that you, it just couldn't turn on till tomorrow. <laughs> He's saying you didn't care about if I was okay or not. Can you acknowledge that? Daniel's best friend is about to apologize. I'm sorry I left you. But can this apology ever be accepted? Did you ever try to call him or find him before he left? My phone was dead, so. You got a charger in your car. No, I don't. Huh, your phone First was so all... dead that you, it just couldn't turn on to tomorrow. All right, so Vel, tell me your point of view. Daniel said that he's ready to hear your side. Tell me your side clearly. Let's stop this narrative that I heard the gunshots and just like, oh wait, did they shoot? Oh no, I'm gone, forget all that. Like, no, I really did try to find him. I really did try to see if he was okay. And you mentioned to me that you wasn't coming back with me anyway, okay? Then he went what? with his other one. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Take a seat. Take a seat. Wait a right, minute. So this, Hold on. This is the thing right here. Yeah. The reason this hasn't been resolved is because you're not taking accountability. I'm hearing it all through this. No accountability There's at no all. No accountability. At the okay. end of the day, yes, you had a right to protect yourself immediately. No one here is going to question that. If there was a shooting, I don't know how I'm going to react. No matter if your phone was dead for five minutes, an hour, or a day, the minute your phone was charged, you don't wait to see a story and then respond to the story. That's cowardly. What you, you do fake. is you say, hey, are you okay? You said you talked to Brittany the next day. It's immediate. Are you okay? That's all your friend was saying. This is all your brother was saying. He's saying you didn't care about if I was okay or not. Can you acknowledge that? Yeah. You see it. That's all it was. Can you tell your friend, your brother right here, I'm sorry that I did not check up on That's you. That's all sorry. you wanted is an apology in front of me? Okay, I'm sorry, Daniel, for no, all these people. No, they want a genuine apology. No, we're not taking that. Come on, so man. So listen, listen. No, this is the thing. You just ruined it right there. Because the thing is, it has to be sincere. There was a shooting, and you did not check to see if somebody who was, like, family to you was hurt. Can you be sincere Let me, let me ask it? you something. If I was dead, would you be sitting here saying, well, I tried to look for him and my phone... No, because he no, 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 no. Please, like, please, nobody... Let, let him... If I was dead, what would your response be right now? Would you just be, oh, well, I tried to look... You feel like in your heart, you tried everything in your power to make sure I was there during a shooting where bullets kill people. Do it's you okay. feel like that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I, wanna, listen, can I, I really want to know the yeah, answer no, to this I, question. But we already know the answer to that. He right. know, we know, exactly. we know the I, answer. I don't, I don't, you know the answer. You know he'd be hurt. So right now, if you want to acknowledge the past and say, I'm sorry that I didn't check on you, that is the first place <laughs> that you can start. But it has to be sincere. If you don't mean it, don't say it. 
I'm on move. Do you sincerely feel like I should have checked up on you and I should have made sure you were okay? Yeah, Daniel, okay. You still my brother, you still, you still my best friend. So own up. You made a bad choice. Just tell him. Daniel, <clears throat> I made a bad choice. I'm sorry I left you. I want to move on from this. Can you accept that? I don't. Um, to be honest with you, it, it to me it's a it's a bit robotic because you're asking him to do it. Um, it's no, I, it's oh, fake. no, no, no! I didn't. No, that wasn't fake. That was a real apology. He tried to find the words for you. I understand that you're gonna need some time to rebuild the trust, that, that, and I get that. That's, but the question was, I didn't ask you if you can rebuild the trust right now. I right. asked you, can you accept his apology? I can. I, I know can, it's gonna I, take time. I, I know I, that. I forgive you, bro. Look at that. For there sure. you go. First steps. He forgives you. I Give it up for that. He forgives you. Take the time to rebuild your friendship. It's gonna take some time, but y'all can get there. For he sure. at least acknowledges that he messed up that night. Yeah. Don't let the gun violence tear y'all apart, all right? Y'all get there. Y'all gonna be all right. It was a sincere apology. Start trying to rebuild the trust, all right? All right, good. Listen, everyone, thank you for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all.